This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So sometimes when assets are transferred from one person to another, donor to donee, under the gift relief rules, um, not all the assets uh, that are transferred are actually being wholly used uh, for the trade. So where that is the case, where only part of the asset is being used, or where an asset has been used for only part of the donor's ownership period, then there is a restriction, obviously, because this is a relief for business assets. And therefore, if you've got investment assets, um, they cannot uh, qualify. Now, if that is the case, where, the sh where it is shares, and the owner owns at least 5% of the voting shares, then the gain will be restricted using the following fractions. You have chargeable business assets on the top and chargeable assets underneath. And it says there's a note here. I'm just going to read that through. It says, note that this treatment is completely different to that which applies to business asset disposal or bad relief. Remember that for business asset disposal relief purposes, there's no question of apportionment. It's either a trading company or it's not. OK, so let's put this a little bit more uh, information to it. What is a chargeable asset and what is a chargeable business asset? So chargeable assets are those held by the company, obviously. They can be used for business or they could be used for investments. And don't forget, cars are exempt. So you might have a balance sheet with London buildings, plant and machinery, goodwill, cars, all sorts of various different things. Then you'll have stock and debtor and bank and cash. All of those things are on a balance sheet. Some of them are chargeable to tax. Cars are not chargeable to tax. Neither is cash, neither is the bank, neither is the stock, neither are the debtors. So only some of a balance sheet is chargeable, but also on a balance sheet, you might have chargeable business assets. So assets that are chargeable, like shares, they are chargeable to tax, but under the shares rule. Then you have chargeable business assets. These are the ones used for the purpose of the trade, excluding investments in things like shares. So let's have a look at example number 10. Johannes owns 100% of the shares in John Limited, of which he is the marketing director. On the 1st of December 23, he made a gift of shares to his son when the market value of the shares was £800,000. The cost of the shares had been £200,000. So at the time of the gift, John Limited owned the following assets. So we got some premises, some goodwill, some investment, some stock, and debtors and cash. So first things first, any balance sheet, these are non-business assets. And they are not chargeable. And then we have these. Come to 800,000, which are chargeable assets, but that is a non business one. So let's have a look at how that would look in a pro forma, shall we? So, Johannes, so it's a, a connected person's transaction. So we're looking for market value as opposed to proceeds. And that's the market value of the shares at the time. Less the cost, which he paid for them originally. Which gives us a gain of 600,000. Now, we're going to claim gift relief, which is going to be a working. So we need to leave that blank. And then we obviously have the annual exempt amount of six, which gives us a taxable gain here. 
things. So we need to do set your pro forma out with all of these questions. Do the bits you can do. You're going to get half a mark for just adding that in. So make sure you do that every time. And let's do the working. So working one. So these are shares in an unquoted company. And they do qualify for gift relief. But £100,000 of the chargeable assets were investments. So we have here a um, gain. Just go back to, let me just show you again the um, pro forma, the calculation. So that's what we're looking at. The gain is restricted by chargeable business assets on the top and chargeable assets on the bottom. Now always bear in mind with one of these that if it's a fraction then the bigger numbers on the bottom. Okay so that's the gain and those are the chargeable business assets and those are the chargeable assets when we've removed the stock, the debtors and the bank. So 525 is the amount of gift relief that we can claim. And as with all of these calculations, please show every piece of working. So that goes in there. Giving us a gain of 75,000. By the time we take annual exemption off, that gives us 69,000 and that will be taxed at 10%. Okay. So moving on from there then, we've done example number 10. We're going to move on to a further relief, residential relief. Now, if you own a home in the UK and it is your prime or only private residence and you live in it the whole time that you own it, then you will not pay tax when you sell it. It is covered by private residence relief in full, up to half a hectare of ground um, surrounding that house. You'll never have to determine whether what is half a hectare, by the way, um, or whether the grounds are suitable. There are lots of legal cases on that, but you won't have to do that. Now, it is available in full if you've lived there the whole time. If you have not, then the gain is restricted, and that is the calculation so again you would do proceeds less cost equals gain as with all of these then you would take off PRR and then that would give you a taxable gain and this is where all the workings are now actual occupation is exempt there are also some deemed occupations and these are the rules for those but again, you are going to have to learn. You are getting used to the fact now that for capital gains, for income tax, for all of these taxes, lots and lots of rules. The last nine months of any property ownership is, um, is deemed to be full occupation, regardless. Any period during which the individual is required to work abroad because of his um, employment up to four years, any period, up to four years, and that can be split over various times, um, where you have to live elsewhere in the UK because of your job, and three years for any reason. Now, B and D, which is that one and that one, must be preceded, so that's before and afterwards, there must be some actual occupations. Okay. So this is what you would do if you get one of these questions where there is a period of absence you calculate the gain on the property so that's proceeds less cost equals gain work out the total period of ownership in months and then you have to do a chart that shows the deemed and the actual and then you do the calculation which is periods of occupation over total don't forget that the big number is always on the bottom and then we're going to have a look at letting relief. So we're going to have a look at number 11. David bought a house 
on the 1st of April 1998 for £10,000 and he lived in it until June of that year. He worked abroad for two years and then moved back into the house on the 1st of July 20, uh, 2000. He lived in the house until the 31st of December 2006 before leaving to live and work elsewhere in the UK. He did not return to the house and the house was sold on the 30th of June 2023 for £150,000. Okay, first things first, proceeds. Less cost equals gain. Okay, so let's have a look at a computation and how that would work. So we have proceeds of 150. Less cost was 10. This is a gain of 140. Less PRR, which we are now going to work out, gives us a taxable gain. Okay, now when you do this, you have to work out um, the periods of actual and deemed occupation. and anything that is therefore chargeable. And you work it out with dates. So from the 1st of April 98 to the 30th of June 98, he was actually there. So I'm using the question to work out what's actually happening. So from the 1st of July 98 until the 30th of June, 2000 he was working overseas so from the 1st of July 2000 until the 31st of December 2006 he was actually there and then from the 1st of January 2007 until he sold the house on the 30th of June 23. So there was working in the UK. And don't forget the last nine months. Okay, so one of the things that we need to do is to work out the total number of months that he was there. So from the 1st of April 98 through to the 30th of June 2023 and work it out in months, it is 303 months in total. Okay, that's the easy bit, is working out how many months. Uh, these two totals then should come to 303. Now this is where students sometimes can get into difficulty. If that's the case, fill in the actual and deemed, fill in the chargeable. If it doesn't come to 303, you have two minutes only to work out why. See if you can get the maths right. And then if that's the case, you use the figures that you've done. Do not waste time in this exam trying to work out where one month, two months, three months, four months, five months come from. If you show this in its fullness and then use the actual figure, even though it doesn't come to 303, you will still get marks for the, for the process that you've been through. So this period here, the actual ones we can fill in, that was three months. 1st of July 2000 to 2006 in December is 78 months. You'll have to work that out, calculate, because I'm not going to sit here and count them. OK, I'm telling you it's 78. You kind of work that out and make sure you agree with me. Here, two years he was working overseas. That's acceptable because he came back to the house. So the difficult bit we've got is this bit at the end. OK, we know that nine goes in there. 
and we know from there that he's allowed um, four years of working in the UK okay so that's 48 so this should come to 162 which means the balance of this period here the balance of that period 141 goes in there which means we have 162 actual or deemed months so we are looking at let's put it up here so we've got a bit more space because we're running out of space 162 is the actual or deemed that we're going to get relief for divided by the total multiplied by the gain will give us the PRR which is 74,851 giving 65,149 taxable now obviously I've worked through that question all the way through what you need to do now is to make sure that you understand how that works and how I've got through those numbers and do your maths with your fingers. Okay.